Hello students, so we have a question today from Pathfinder chapter number 7 which is Fluid Mechanics. The question is number 3 from Build Up Your Understanding. So the question says bottom of a vessel is inclined at an angle theta and has a hemispherical dent of radius r as shown in the figure. So here we have a vessel, the bottom is inclined at angle theta with the horizontal and there's a hemispherical dent, okay. If a liquid of density rho is filled in the vessel to a height h or the highest point of the dent, find a suitable expression for magnitude of force of liquid pressure on the dent, excluding the contribution of the atmospheric pressure. So, question is very easy. So, let's first understand what is the question saying. So, the highest point of the dent would be this one, right? So, this is at a depth h below the surface of the liquid okay the liquid surface is h height above the dent okay and the dent has a radius r so this is the center of the dent let's mark the radius to be equal to r okay so the question is asking what is the net force due to the liquid on this hemispherical dent okay so now what we will do over here instead of finding the force directly on the dent what we will do we will replace this dent, okay, we will replace this dent with a full container, okay, a full container filled with water even in this space. Then the remaining water is applying some force on the dent and it will apply the same force on the hemispherical liquid as well, okay. So let's say that the force, the force applied is some what in this direction and the value of the force is equal to F. So whatever force this liquid is applying on the dent, it will apply the same force, okay, on the liquid placed in the space of this dent, okay. If there was no dent, okay, then the force on the spherical liquid in this section would be same as that on the dent, okay. So let's do that. So suppose I fill up the container, okay. Now there is no dent. Instead, instead of the dent, we have the liquid filled over here, correct? So the force applied by the remaining liquid will still be same. We have to find this force. So what we do? We find the net force on this hemisphere and equate it to zero, okay. So what are the forces acting on this hemisphere? This is your one of the forces. Then the second force would be mg okay we have to calculate the mass of this hemisphere and that will create the gravitational force on it okay and the third force acting will be the normal force okay the normal force so now it would be easy we just need to calculate the mg and the normal force okay and some of these three forces should be zero we have to write down f vector plus mg vector plus n vector equal to 0, okay. This normal force is the force applied by the bottom of the container on the hemispherical liquid, okay. Now, f vector will be in this case equal to minus of mg vector plus normal force vector. So, the magnitude of f force will be what? Magnitude of f vector will be same as the magnitude of the sum okay so how do you find the magnitude so f will be what root of m square g square plus n square plus 2 mg times normal force times cos phi where phi would be the angle between mg and normal force so for this equation we just need to find mass m we have to find a normal force and we have to find the angle phi between them Okay, so what we do? Let's do that one by one. So first of all, we calculate the mass. So mass of this hemisphere will be very easy. Density into volume. Okay, so M will be density times volume. So rho into 2 by 3 pi r cube. This is your mass M. Now, how do we calculate the normal force? So that's also very easy. Okay, see, we are calculating the normal force on a flat surface. Okay. This normal force will be created because of the pressure of the liquid over there. Okay. Now, for a flat surface, 
you can calculate the normal force very easily using the average pressure for this circular flat surface the average pressure will be the pressure at the center of the liquid okay so we just need to calculate the pressure at the center multiplied with the area which is pi r square so what is the pressure at the center so the center is submerged h plus r depth below the surface okay so pressure over here will be how much pressure will be average pressure will be density into g times r plus h so we can find the normal force very easily rho g r plus h is the pressure we multiplied with the area pi r square simple okay so we found m we found normal force okay we found this much part now we need to calculate the angle phi so that is also very easy this surface is making angle theta with the horizontal then the normal force is making angle theta with the vertical okay so this is your normal force this is mg okay and normal force is making angle theta with the vertical and this is your angle phi so phi will be what pi minus theta and then cos phi will be cos of pi minus theta and that will be equal to minus cos theta okay so we just need to put these values in our formula over here cos phi will be replaced by minus cos theta so that's it we got the answer let's just write the values so f will be equal to m square g square or mg whole square so m is what 2 by 3 pi r cube rho multiplied by g whole square plus normal force square so rho g r plus h pi r square whole square and cos phi will be minus cos theta so we write down minus 2 mg that is 2 by 3 pi r cube rho g times normal force rho g r plus h pi r square times cos theta and this whole will have a power of 1 by 2 that's it and we found the answer okay very easy